Good morning. Good morning. I'm just going to give it another minute or two in case anyone else wants to log on and then we'll go ahead and get started. And this is being recorded just for people who aren't able to attend. So. Can I ask a quick question? Of course. Uh, so I received the email and I have uh, two of the requirements, but I'm still a sophomore. So would I be able to take the course in the spring semester? Um, are you, did you bring credits in? I'm sorry, what? Did you bring credits in? Like, are you gonna be a junior in spring? No, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's only for juniors and seniors. So you can listen if you want for next year, but if you have other stuff to do, you can also log off. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's, um. When I send stuff out to the majors list, I just sort of include everybody because I never know who's like got different status than it says. So, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. And if anybody else logs on, that's great. So, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Myers. Um, my PhD is in clinical psychology. So, I am our internship uh, supervisor and I teach the internship in psychology course. So I sent out the info, but sometimes I think it helps to uh, take a look at it together. So I am going to go ahead and pull over the syllabus so that I can screen share it. And we'll go through that really quickly. And then we'll look at the sites that we have. Um, and then I'll answer any questions folks have. Alrighty. So here's the syllabus. Um, this past spring, I had to teach two sections. We had so many people, which was really, really cool. Um, we should be able to be in person, um, not on Zoom, although we certainly made it work. Um, depending on your site, you know, they might do some stuff remote, some stuff in person. That was sort of the mix folks had last year. So, um, Basically, your purpose in this course is to get some experience in the field. Um, and as you've seen, if you've looked over the list of sites, we have lots of different options. Um, I do expect you to show up on time to your internship site. Um, obviously, stuff comes up, so you call your supervisor, let them know, particularly again in the time of COVID. Obviously, you're not going to go in if you're uh, going to be exposing other people, but you've got to always inform your supervisor. It's actually pretty hard to nail down internships in psychology, as you could see if you looked at a second page of <laughs> the, the list of sites where people who are still like getting back to me about whether they have anything for next semester. Um, so I strive really, really hard to keep good relationships with these sites, and this is a big piece of that making sure you are there when you say you're gonna be or you let them know. Um, we will, uh, the actual class itself is largely discussion-based. At the beginning, I do a couple little lectures, uh, but typically we're just discussing issues that you might have faced at your internship site or that in general you might uh, run into. So we spend some time, for example, talking about um, privacy laws, so HIPAA and FERPA, things along those lines. Your main work you do throughout the semester, besides actually going to your internship site, is doing a weekly reflection paper following this KWL format. Um, so you, every week, to sort of talk about what happened at your internship, you know, how did it pull from previous coursework? What are new things you want to learn and what did you learn this week? In the second half of the semester, I have students lead half a class worth of discussion just to kind of make things more interesting, start getting you used to talking about your site. You write a paper, a lot of people bulk at this 10 to 15 pages, but um, essentially the first half to more of that 
always ends up being you condensing down your journals from throughout the semester. Because as you can see, your number one thing here is summary of your internships experiences. Um, and that's gonna be from your journals. So um, then you reflect it to your previous coursework, again, using that KWL with throughout um, allows you to do that pretty easily. And then reflecting on how your experiences relate to your future career goals. So sometimes it will be, this is not what I want to do, and that's okay. Uh, and other times it will be, uh, yeah, this is really what I want to do. And in fact, they've offered me a job in the fall. That's happened several times to interns. For this paper, you're going to have at least five scholarly sources. You find one of those. Uh, by doing your uh, class reading, reading and discussion. So, you know, I try to set you up for it. The last thing you do, what we do during our exam period is you give a presentation about your experiences. We usually uh, invite the supervisors to attend these as well. So that can be a pretty fun experience. You will get evaluated by your supervisor at a couple points throughout the semester. You'll self-evaluate as well. And then a lot of your points come from just doing your hours. So you log your hours throughout the semester. If something comes up, as has the past two years, where you're just not going to be able to finish your hours in person, it's just not going to work. I do have alternative assignments that you can do to essentially do the equivalent of hours. So you can kind of see the breakdown here. <clears throat> and then what's at the end of the syllabus is the learning agreement that you will fill out with your supervisor before you start your internship. And so this can be really helpful for you all to talk about what are your job duties going to be, who's going to supervise you, how are they gonna evaluate you, things along those lines. Okay, so that's the syllabus. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch my share so that I can walk you through the site descriptions. Okay, and let me zoom this in so it's a little easier to see on whatever device you're on. So big note at the top here, you are not beholden to these sites. Um, Pretty much every year I have someone do a new internship and a lot of times those end up being sites we keep, which is super awesome. So certainly you are uh, welcome to uh, find another internship site in consultation with me. And then Jessica Harrington in the Lighthouse is a really good resource for this stuff. Um, so Western Tidewater Community Services Board. I've had students do a couple different things there. Um, you work with adults with either mental health issues or intellectual disabilities. The past few years, they tend to work with um, more folks with uh, severe mental illness like schizophrenia and things along those lines. Chesapeake Bay Academy, if you're not familiar, is right behind our softball field. And it is uh, a K through 12 independent school specifically focused on serving kids with learning differences. Um, and so you work with the school counselor and you help with classes, you work with individual students, you help lead groups. This has been become one of my favorite sites. And this is a site that like a student found because she was interested in school psych. So um, very cool stuff over there. I think there's also going to be an opportunity to help with some research over there this semester, this coming semester too. All right, Westminster Canterbury um, is in the capacity of hospice work. If you're not familiar with what hospice is, it's designed to provide support and comfort care for patients and families where patients are given six months or fewer to live. Um, and basically they decide, I don't want to keep doing treatment. I want to just sort of live out the rest of my life in peace. So. People who've worked here have gone into Westminster Canterbury and then also visited people at other sites or doing home visits as well. One of the cool things about Westminster Canterbury is our supervisor there is actually a VWU alum who was one of the first people to do the internship course, uh, Sarah Russ. So 
very, very cool that we've sort of come full circle with that. Um, and same thing at Samaritan House, actually. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Samaritan House, it is a domestic violence shelter, but also works on, as you can see, a lot of different um, issues surrounding that for uh, families and women in the area. Our supervisor there is uh, Michaela Martin Kelly, who is uh, one of our alums as well, who did an internship. Uh, and so she uh, is in charge of this and has been very excited about potentially getting BWU interns this year. So you can see you could do crisis calls, you could be a victim advocate, you can work with housing, um, children's case management, uh, things along those lines. And then one that I forgot to put on the version I sent out, but that we had two interns at in the spring is the Tidewater Youth Services Commission. Um, the locations our students went to last year were in Virginia Beach, uh, but as you can see, they have locations all over Tidewater. Um, so these folks run group homes and programs for juvenile clients, many of whom um, may have been in trouble legally or are struggling with some mental health issues, uh, often less than ideal home situations. So uh, I know that uh, one of my interns worked more closely with, with the uh, youth last year and one did more with uh, sort of background information. So she got some expertise or some experience in grant writing, which is huge. Like some people don't even get that experience in graduate school. So here are the ones I still am trying to get them to nail down. Um, so Norfolk State would be a new one um, and you would work with faculty in their psychology department uh, on their research for their current projects. Um, Our Lady of Perpetual Help is one I've had for a long time. Uh, they're just, my supervisor there is turning over. So I need to reach back out to the new folks and try to connect. I have reached out, but haven't heard anything. So, um, but it is on Princess Anne. It's not terribly far from school. And um, it has an entire wing dedicated to working with uh, people with Alzheimer's and dementia. So this has been a great site in the past for our folks. Um, another one I'm hoping to reconnect with is Children's Hospital, the King's Daughter CHKD. Um, so we did have a student here for the first time last spring and uh, helped with extensively with research that's being done on uh, early childhood mental health. And then one that I've had in the past that could be in Norfolk or Chesapeake is CASA, which is Court Appointed Special Advocate. You do have to go through a training for this. That's 30 hours. That counts towards your 140 hours. Um, and that goes for any training you do for any site. The training that you do counts towards your hours. Um, and then you are paired with a child who's going through the court system. The only thing is you have to be 21 at the time of application. This is actually headed down, I believe, from the Virginia State Supreme Court. So we can't fudge that. <laughs> Just heads up on that. Um, one that I had last year, and again, supervisor turnover. Uh, I think there's a lot of turmoil right now with you know everything going on. But uh, is the child for uh, the Center for Child and Family Services Behavioral Health Department in Hampton? Um, so I've had a student there do supervised visits. Another um, worked with prisoners and those who just got out of prison. And then another one I'm hoping again to reconnect with is uh, in faith psychological services. This is a private practice and she has had students help her with assessment extensively in the past. Um, so it's been a really great experience for them. So, and again, you are not stuck with these, although certainly they're all wonderful sites for our interns have gotten really good experiences, um, but uh, you know, you can branch out beyond these, uh, you know, to find something else that fits more with what you're interested in. Alrighty, so that's the basic gist of the syllabus and the basics 
of our sites. Um, I'm going to mute so I can blow my nose and not blow your ears out. Uh, but while I'm doing that, if anyone has questions, please feel free to either unmute yourself or throw them in the chat. Hi, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. I am a veteran and I'm very passionate about um, site differences and behavioral differences in veterans. So would it be possible for me to reach out to the veterans hospital or the clinics that are on base that do provide behavioral health for veterans and see if I can do an internship there? Definitely. You know, I don't know if they'll be open to it, but we can always ask, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, because, you know, sometimes those types of places will only take people with master's degrees, but they might have some work that we can do, uh, you know, again, sort of more on this volunteer basis. But I would love to have a veteran site. I worked at the VA before I came here, um, and I, I know how important the work is, so that would be great. Okay. If Thank not, you. then maybe we could reach out through a nonprofit like a Wounded Warrior Project or something like that. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, that'd be great. Hi, I know I joined late, but um, just to be sure, it's the class period you're assigned to um, and then the service work outside of the class period too, right? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, and you make your own schedule with your site for your 10 hours a week. And people have been flexible with those. So for example, I've had students who like a couple years ago, we had a lot of snow in spring semester. And so there were some people working in the school system and it kept closing. Um, and so over spring break, they went in and did extra hours and caught up really quickly. Okay. And none of the is none of this is paid, right? No, none of it is paid. It is well, okay. but it is only 10 hours a week. So most people can kind of work it around to everything else. Yeah. It is something I'm pondering for the future um, to whether to allow paid ones because there are problems with unpaid work, obviously. Mm -hmm changes the nature of your relationship with the company if you get back, right they're less likely to spend a lot of time supervising and teaching you um, because they think you're like you're an employee you're not someone who's there to learn and so that's the main reason i've made it unpaid in the past um, but certainly if we could negotiate that with a site where they would pay you but still provide you with extensive supervision i would be fine with that okay thank you so much yeah, good question I know. Oh, go ahead, Tasha. Oh, okay. Um, I was wondering, is there like a certain deadline to where we have to like, I just want to know like the process, like, is it if we don't get like an internship at all at a certain time, we're not able to take the class? Is this like a guaranteed someone will be in an internship? So like, yeah, as long as, so there's the application I sent out um, and I'll resend it out with the link to this video um, after this. And I want that by Friday, in theory, I made it that soon so that people have a couple days of grace if they need to turn it in next week, turn it in late. Um, but yeah, after that, after I check with your uh, references here, then um, I approve you. I think I've only ever turned down one person just because they didn't meet the criteria. Um, but yeah, typically the people who are interested in this class are not the people who are like engaging in antisocial behaviors, right? So typically, yes. And then what happens is I will link you with a site. And if for some reason that falls through, um, I can help you find a different site. So uh, for example, last year, I had two students who were going to work with our private practice person. And at the last minute, she was just like, you know, with everything going on with COVID, I just don't think I can give them a good experience. Um, and so she backed out. Uh, Jessica Harrington helped us track down. It was actually the Tidewater Youth Services site 
and within like this was like during j term right so it was gonna start in a couple weeks um and, and we were able to get both of them rolling with that although one of, though i think they both had to take incompletes to finish their hours since they started a little behind um but yeah it's you know if one site falls through i will work with you to find something else i'm really passionate about whoever wants to do an internship along again as long as you're not going to go out and be a horrible person right um, i want to be able to get you out there and um get you that experience so okay. by submitting oh sorry <laughs> so by submitting an application does that mean like you're locked in like you have to do it for the spring Nope, not at all. So I would say submit it. And then if you change your mind, you're fine. I mean, technically, once you register for the course, you're kind of locked in, but I think- Okay, I'm so not really until you register for the course and you're exactly. really- Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the only reason that I have you will fill out this application so quickly is that um, some of the sites, like say you wanted to do CASA, right? Like it would be ideal if you could get in that 30 hours of training this semester. Um, some of the sites will want things like your vaccine record. Some of the things sites will want you to do their in-house orientation or some online things. And so this gives you a couple months to get all that rolling. And again, even if you're doing it this semester, any hours of training you're doing still count for your 140 hours next semester. Okay. Um, also for this semester, is there anything you could possibly send out for more opportunities like of stuff that we could do this semester too? Because I I feel like you might have sent stuff before, but I need to like start getting on that probably too. If I can. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't have anyone who's asked for someone in particular this semester, but Jessica Harrington in the White House is the person to talk to because she has her um, finger on the pulse of all of that stuff. Uh, she gets emails all the time from people who are looking for folks. So she is a really great person. And if you all don't know, um, her master's is actually in counseling psychology. So she's like even better for our psych majors and, you know, has connections from her experience in practicing that she can help with. I had another question. Um, I've never is port day like part of like the class? Like, is that like a grade or how does that, is that just something that students that do internships and research and stuff do voluntarily or is that part of their class? That's a good question. So it used to be required um, when the Lighthouse first started. Um, I have moved it to completely optional <laughs> because y'all do a lot anyway. Um, so, you know, if you are excited about doing port day, uh, then you can do it and I can help you do it. But if you have no interest in it, I'm not going to force you. If you're doing like a really cool internship and you're getting a really valuable experience, I might like encourage you to do it just to talk about what that cool experience is. Like, I don't know if any of you overlapped with Ryan de los Reyes, but he was the first one to do our private practice assessment internship. And so... I um, talked him into presenting <laughs> because I was like, this is such a cool internship. You should really talk about it so people can see the type of things you're doing. But no, I have made Port Day totally optional um, just because it's a lot at the end of the semester. And most of the time, there's only like six spots to do oral presentations in all of the social sciences. So then most people have to make a poster which means you have to do that on top of like your paper and your PowerPoint that you have to do for this class. So I have made it optional. Yeah, I'm gonna like age myself right now. Back in the day before the Lighthouse existed, we had some, we had just the academic fair um, and we used to present there and that was cool because what they would do is they just give us a table and the interns would like rotate out um, and just stand there and talk about their experiences with folks. And that was kind of fun. And again, that was totally voluntary too. Um, so, you know, if they do an academic fair model this year, maybe we can ask about doing something like that, but only if people are interested. I should say I do usually open up the presentations to the psych department members and if I can remember the majors and minors too. Um, but I think like twice have people come from that most of the time. 
it's like reading day and everyone's really busy or it's during exam times and everyone's really busy so okay thank you yeah no problem Any other questions? I'm glad to answer them. If not, you all have asked really great questions. This will be really helpful uh, for folks. Like I said, I am going to, once this video converts and I can upload it to YouTube, I will um, send out another email that has this link. If you, any of you have friends or classmates who are thinking about doing an internship, but might think, oh, I can't because I didn't go to this meeting. No, <laughs> like they can definitely still do it. Uh, tell them to get in touch with me if they have any questions or to just fill out the application form um, and we can go from there. So everyone have a great few days. I'll look forward to getting uh, your uh, applications in soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good